Hi, hi, Kushal. Good evening. Thank you for taking the time to interview with us. Hi, Manuraj. Thank you so much uh, for giving me the opportunity. I'm very excited to give this interview. Great. And and how was your day today? It was amazing. I it was very productive, and uh, I had an amazing time brainstorming on a few ideas with some of my friends. And I hope your day has been going well as well. It is. It is. And I think. Uh... There's nothing better that I would probably do on a Saturday evening than to scout for talent for our, for our leadership program here at Aditya Birla. So we're very excited to be in conversation with people like you. Thank you so much. Means a lot. Great. So, uh, Kushal, why don't we get started? And if you could just quickly introduce yourself. Sure. So uh, I'm Kushal. I am a qualified chartered accountant in November 2019. I got All India ranks in all the three levels of CE exams. All India ranks six in the entrance, five in inter, five in finals. Uh, I have done my articleship from a mid-sized firm named Gokhale and Sate. Primarily, I was involved in the statutory audit and concurrent audit departments. However, I have also rotated my departments and I have worked in indirect taxation and direct tax assessment and litigation. Apart from my uh, articleship experience, I have also anchored the national conference for CA students, which happened in January 2020, where there were 3,200 plus attendees, and I was the lead anchor for that entire event. So I'm very passionate about public speaking and I'm very passionate about presentations as well. I am interested in reading a lot of uh, books re related to startup investing. And apart from that, I am also an avid reader and consumer of uh, content on current affairs. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. And it was lovely getting to know about you. But you, you mentioned somewhere that, you know, you had a rank six in your foundation and then five in your IPCC and five in your finals. I mean, first of all, heartiest congratulations for that. It's it's an absolutely big accolade to be an All India ranker. But thank you, thank you so much. That also begs the question that you know why would you want to be with a conglomerate when you can actually be interviewing with a McKinsey or a Bain, or you could be a strategy consultant with a leading bank like Citibank or J.P. Morgan. So why would you want to not pick that over this? Sure. Thank you so much for asking that question. I think that I would want an overall exposure of a stint at various types of uh, uh, companies in the sense that Aditya Birla Group has companies in the cement sector, which is Ultratech Cement. You have a company in the aluminum sector, which is Hindalco. There's a company in the NBFC space, which is the financial services space that I love the most, which is Aditya Birla Capital. And even I have uh, heard that there are central functions which are there in Aditya Birla Group, which includes functions like corporate finance, corporate economic cell, central cell, where a lot of exposure is given to all the qualified chartered accountants. So having said this, I would not want myself to just have an experience or exposure of one particular department. I am very much ready and passionate to like to just involve myself in all the different stints which you provide in the flagship finance leadership program. And these three stints of four months each that you are going to offer me in the first year would definitely allow me to understand about the different areas of operations and different functions of a department in, let's say, marketing, operations, sales, and finance. That will help me in order to groom my entire personality. And going forward, you are giving the discretion for us to select which stint we want to stay in for the rest of our career, which is, again, a very positive point for us so that we can also understand and experiment where our interest lies in. So that's one of the main reasons, and I am very much excited uh, to work with a company like yours, where an overall exposure is going to be given, rather than just a strategy strategy role, where I would be given to advice to a particular department. Wow, excellent! I think I, I love the granularity with which you know one you've done your research on the group, and second I appreciate the school of thought, the clarity that you have, the vision that you've come. And this is something which we appreciate. We want our candidates to know that, you know, what is it that they want to do? Where do they want to go next? So that's phenomenal. Thank you for that answer. I think uh, I want to get down to a little bit of technicality. I think I fundamentally understand about your background. And I understood that, you know, you want to be here for a few number of reasons, which you rightly mentioned. So if I, if I were to ask you a technical question, let's say that, you know, I have two companies. The PE of one is 18 and the other is and of the other one is 20. They're both in the same industry, same kind of product lines. And if you as an investor had to choose one, which one would you pick and why would you do that? Got it. Uh, I just uh, wanted to ask one question. Can I ask a question before I answer? Oh, please. So I wanted to understand uh, are the revenue numbers and profit numbers also the same in uh, for both the companies? Yes. Got it. So in my uh, understanding, I feel that since both the companies are in the same industry and both the revenue numbers as well as the profit numbers are similar, the company which is trading at a P multiple of 18 is undervalued in my opinion in the sense that this stock has a potential to go up to 20, which is the other stock. 
so i feel that if everything is same about both the stocks i would invest in a stock trading at a p multiple of 18 because this is undervalued as of now and the chances of this stock going to 20 are higher and i can make good amount of return by investing in a stock which is trading at a p multiple of 18 wow, that's 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 actually the exact explanation that i look for in the answer so thank you thank you Bushal, for that uh and and just just to sort of you know uh digress a little bit but to continue the technicality of questions uh, a company which is not listed on the stock exchange and is privately held how would you calculate its valuation in your opinion got it so these would include any startups as well right, uh, right. private limited companies yeah. got it so i think in my opinion if a company is not listed in a stock market i would go down with two approach two approaches one would be transaction comparables by that what i mean is that if there is a similar company in the space which is listed on the stock exchange i would see at what multiple of their profits or revenues these companies are trading at and i would apply a similar multiple taking an average of the industry to the startup or the private limited company that is one however if there is no listed comparable in the space if there is no comparable which is listed in the stock markets i would see what was the valuation of private companies in this same space itself and what was the multiple that they raised their previous round on? So, for example, if I take uh, example of a company like Zepto, which is in quick commerce, I would see what is the valuation of his uh, of the substitute uh, of the competition of Zepto, which is Blinkit, and then I would just see what was the valuation of Blinkit in the last round. I would apply that multiple to the Zepto's revenue or profitability. Uh, assuming that these startups would be loss making, I would do a price to revenue multiple and not price to earnings multiple because most of the startups are loss making. And yes. the revenue multiple would then be adjusted to Zepto itself, taking in account the factors which are there into consideration. The second method of answering, the second method of valuing these private companies would be using a discounted cash flow technique where I would project the revenues for the potential foreseeable future and discount them at a relevant interest rate, which is the weighted average cost of capital to calculate the fair value of the startup. This would include, this would include a lot of assumptions and honestly, this wouldn't be uh, very relevant for an early stage startup. But if it is a late stage startup, which has raised more than five to six rounds of funding, I can fairly estimate their future earnings based on the previous financial data that I will have. So these are the two methods that I would do. Uh, and uh, these would be the ways of valuing the startups. Great, great, Kushal. I think uh, you've covered both a textbook definition of how you would value, as well as you've given a holistic example of, you know, companies. I, and I really like the word, uh, what was, what did you call Zepto is in which industry? Quick commerce. Quick commerce, yep. yeah. That's that's an excellent term. You know, it's a very niche evolving industry and people still call it e-commerce. I'm glad that, you know, you could use that example and you use that terminology. So fantastic. I think uh, last two questions, I think I'm good with the technical RAM. I just wanted to, you know, sort of uh, talk about sometimes how demanding this program can get. And a lot of, you know, uh, you and your colleagues in this program, if you choose to join, may have to work, you know, late nights on certain occasions. So do you think you will be able to cope up with that pressure and are you willing to do that? Yes, Manurad. So I would give you an example. So when I was doing my articleship, we had a deadline of filing the income tax returns. So filing income tax returns has a deadline of 31st July for all, all the individual clients. Right. And there were 10 clients whose returns were spending to be filed on 31st of July itself. And I ensured that I'm staying back late till 11.30 p.m. in the office and ensuring that all the returns are filed on the same day because we did not want our clients to face penalties. The right. reason I'm giving you this example is because I want to say that when the deadlines are there, when there is pressure of finishing work under a particular timeline, I would make sure that I am prioritizing work over any other thing. And I also understand the importance of ensuring that the tasks are finished in a given timeline. So the timeline, if that can be met in consensus, when we decide the project, I would be more than happy to stay for longer hours and ensure that the task is done within the given timeline. And even if ask, even even if it asks me to, let's say, stay for longer hours after my office working hours as well, I would definitely prioritize my uh, work over any other thing. But I would sincerely request if the task is done, then I would prioritize academics after a point in time where I would also need to focus on my other examinations after a point in time. So that is something which would be a sincere request from my end. But again, having said this, I would be more than happy to work for longer hours. Great, great, Kushal. I mean, that that puts out, but that gives us a lot of, you know, happiness to know that you're willing to put in the effort. And I also appreciate your candor and, you know, coming forth and telling us that you would want to prioritize your academics. So thank you very much for the candor and honesty. Uh, I think I'm good. And thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to do this. Do you have any questions for us?
Yes, Anuraj, I had a couple of questions. Uh, one was, uh, I wanted to understand how does a typical day in a life of an analyst look like if he is supposed to join Aditya Birla Group's finance leadership program? And secondly, how does the growth prospect look like for me if I join your organization? Sure. So I'll, I'm going to answer them in tandem one after the other. I think, uh, so I'm going to take the second one first, that, you know, what are your growth prospects and how do you, you know, sort of, uh, like you rightly mentioned, there are multiple divisions. There's Hindalco, there's a finance division, there's a consumer products division, and there's a lot of fungibility and flexibility that's offered to you to rotate between these divisions. As part of the program, you'll be spending the first year, four months in one division, and then you move on to the other one. So I think you get a very cross-cultural exposure. You get to collaborate with different teams. You also work with the central strategy team to understand the mandate of the larger organization, which flows from the board of directors. So it puts your thoughts and actions in tandem with the company's vision. So you also learn how to be an entrepreneur and how do you run the company, not just the work or the domain that you're working in. So I think that's step one in understanding the fungibility of this program and the flexibility you get. I, I mean, I hope this answers and coming to your first question now, that what kind of growth prospects do you get? I think we want to really invest in you for the first year so that you, know, you get a cross-cultural exposure. You get to collaborate with different agents of the organization, work in different divisions. And as an analyst, you sort of do the grunt work. So it's a bottoms up approach, right? So you do the, you do the analysis and you sort of, you know, present your analysis to the management, but you are also aware of what the management wants because you're centrally reporting into this program's leadership team. So it helps, helps you to, you know, sort of combine your intelligence and the delivery version of the team to deliver in tandem with what the company really wants. And once you finish the program, you choose your division and the, the role in which you want to grow. So there's immense opportunities for you to grow within the company in the same division or in different parts of the company in different divisions. So I hope that answers. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much uh, for the answer. And I look forward to hearing about the candidature from you. Thank you. Thank you, Kushal. We appreciate your time and interest in our organization. Please allow us a few days to get back. And I hope you enjoy your Sunday tomorrow. Thanks again for your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.